Hey everybody, it's Kay. Hope you're doing well. So, um, I thought about something the other day when I was doing that backlist video that I do have a lot of books on my shelves that I have read, but I read them so long ago. I can't even remember a lot of details in the books. All I know is I remember walking away from the book thinking, wow, that book was good. So I tucked it away on the shelf, but I haven't touched them in years. Some of them I just bought recently, you know, within the last couple of years. And, and one of them even just a few weeks ago, simply because I remember thinking at the time the book was so good. So I thought, you know, maybe some of these books are worth a reread since they're just, just sitting there on the shelf. Maybe I can work them in and read some of these books instead of just letting them collect dust. You know what I mean? So the only thing that scares me about rereading a book, um, there was a girl online the other day who had posted that she just recently reread The Coldest Winter Ever because she wanted to read the sequel that just came out or is just being released. And when she finished the book, she said, this book was terrible. Why did I even like this book in the first place? <laughs> and that scares me about some of my faves. What if I, what if I read the book again and they don't like it? And I was like, that book ain't as good as I thought it was. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? Then it would mess up the, the nostalgia of the book, you know? Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to share with you some books that I do think might be worth the reread. Some of these I read when I was like in my 20s. I'm 50 now and I just wonder what my my thoughts on those books would be today if I reread them. Anyway, here they are. First book is Mama by Terry McMillan. It was one of those, I like this one, I think better even than Waiting to Exhale. But a lot of people didn't talk about this book back in the day. And of course, it wasn't adapted into a movie like some of her other works. But I liked this one. Yeah. Next, um, <laughs> I guess I'm feeling a little brave since I just finished Song of Solomon. And now I want to reread this one. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Pecola Breedlove. All I remember about Pecola Breedlove is that she wanted blue eyes and something tragic happened in her childhood. That's all I can remember about this book. Next is probably one of my favorite books by this author. And I think it was because I really liked his, his first books. I really did. But this one was like, I when I started to see the change in the writing style, and to me, this book was an elevation from what he had written before. And I think that also because I met the author and got his autograph, that could be another reason this book means a lot to me. Um, Eric Jerome Dickey, and the book is Chasing Destiny. Also, I like a lot of suspense, and this book was very suspenseful. So, yeah. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Eric Jerome Dickey did pass away this year. And um, so, yeah, just very nostalgic about this book and how much I loved him as an, as an author. Just really, really good. Um, these next two books are by an author who is one of my favorites. And I hate that I let people borrow some of my books of hers and they never gave them back. I just, I'm trying to let that go, but it still bothers me. Um, but this first book I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. I have read it multiple times. The main character in this book is outrageous. She's over the top. She's almost cartoonish. Um, some parts of the book are just so unbelievable, but I love this book because I love nonsense, mess, and foolishness in a novel. I don't know why I just do. The messier, the better. <laughs> in a certain way. It has to be a certain, I can't even explain it, but mess in a certain kind of way. 
Anyway, this book is The Upper Room by Mary Monroe. And trigger warning. Um, so the book is about uh, a woman named, named Mama Ruby. She helps her best friend to deliver her baby. The baby is stillborn. Mama Ruby has supposedly healing hands and brings the baby back to life. But she doesn't tell the best friend. She Instead, she kidnaps the baby and runs away. Honey. And then mess ensues from there. But I love this book. And speaking of Mary Monroe, here's the next one that a lot of people read and loved, God Don't Like Ugly. It's about a young woman, um, Annette, her best friend Rhoda. Annette and her mom uh, live together. They take in a boarder, Mr. Boatwright, who is one of the most unlikable, disgusting characters I've ever read in literature. I, I cannot stand Mr. Boatwright. Um, but it is a coming-of-age story for Annette, Rhoda, and their friend Pee Wee. Excellent writing, excellent book. Um, I am not really a sci-fi kind of girl, but I read this book years ago, and I never forgot this author's name because it was just so unique and different to me. Um, I know this book, I believe it is part of a series, but I don't know if it's the first, second, third book. I think it's the first, My Soul to Keep by Tanana Rufdu. And I, I have read a couple of other things by her. I read The Good House, and I really liked that one. And I read The Black Rose, the story of Madam C.J. Walker by her. Very, very good. This one definitely deserves a reread. And I hope to squeeze it in this year. It's Family by J. California Cooper. She is one of my favorite, favorite authors. She's got to be in my top two or three. Yeah, and um, phenomenal. This book made, made me cry. My aunt and my mom, who were both not readers, they both read it, loved it, and cried too. So this one holds a special place for me. It is a story of enslaved people. And um, I don't want to give away, I don't know how much of it is would be a spoiler. So I really don't want to say, but this one is a real good book. If you've never read J. California Cooper, start with this one. Next, um, I really do like this author, and I don't know why a lot of people don't really talk about her or her books on social media, because I think she's phenomenal. My favorite two books by her are One Day I Saw a Black King and Don't Want No Sugar. But this book is... And on the eighth day, she rested, and the author is J.D. Mason. Um, this book is about a woman who, she is in an abusive relationship. She gets out of that relationship, and now she's at a phase in her life of, what next? What now? What am I going to do now? And she's trying to move into um, who, she, who, she is, who she really wants to be in life. I think a lot of us could relate to that. You come out of something and you're ready to move on to something else. You're just trying to figure out your way. So yeah. I wanna I wanna pick that one up again. A Long Way From Home by Connie Briscoe. This is a story of enslaved people and um, several generations of this family. And I think I re I read this one around the same time that I read Jubilee for the first time. And the stories, you know, just just very good writing. Connie Briscoe is a really, really good writer. And again, she's one of those I feel needs more recognition. But I love Jubilee. That one, I would love to read that one too. But um, this one's really, really good. Next we have um, Your Blues Ain't Like Mine by B.B. Moore Campbell. I talked about this one not too long ago. Um reminiscent of the Emmett Till story where a young man lives in Chicago. He goes down south to Mississippi to visit his family. He makes a comment to a white woman and her family feels he needs to, to pay for that. So I remember passing this. This is one of those books that you passed around between you and your friends back in the day. 
Next is um, Big Girls Don't Cry by Connie Briscoe. I've shown this one um, recently to the protest in 2020 really made me think of this book. Naomi's brother is a um, an activist. He's fighting for civil rights. He's tragically killed. She has to decide whether or not she wants to follow his legacy or find her own path. And then there's some romance mix, mixed in here too. So Big Girls Don't Cry, Connie Briscoe. This book, I really can't remember anything of what it's about. I just remember thinking, man, that, that book was so good. I know it's about a very dysfunctional family. It is Child of God by Lolita Files. And you can look that up. I'm not going to read the synopsis or anything. And then finally, I just got this book a couple of weeks ago at the bookstore. In fact, I went to the bookstore hoping this book would be there. And I was so glad that it was because I actually thought I owned it. And that when I was going through the shelves, I realized I didn't. But now I do. It is Trying to Sleep in the Bed You Made by Virginia DeBerry and Donna Grant. And it's a coming of age story. We have a couple of best friends, Pat and Gail. And some things happens in their childhood they're bound to secrecy by it and I wish I could remember what it was I can't so I guess that means I have to do what reread the book so those are just a few I wanted to show you today I want to challenge my fellow booktubers to do the same thing go through the books that you have um, the books that you feel deserve a reread at this point in time in your life to see how you how you feel about the book. So I'm going to challenge um, Musical Tati and Brown Girl Reading, um, Art Books Life, Pretty Brown Eye Reader, Always Doing, All D Books, Bookish, Comfy Cozy Up, um, Karen Evans, I'm going to leave people out, um, let, uh, oh, Lisa, I'm trying to think of your channel name. Literary Latinx, um, everybody, everybody who sees the video, if you're a book tour, I challenge you to do the same, you know, share with us books that you read a long time ago that you think deserve a reread because you may be introducing us to books that we've never read before. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want to say hi to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the family. Um, hope that everyone enjoys their day and until next time, keep reading. Bye-bye.